And here now for an exclusive interview, the latest candidate, comedian Stephen Colbert, rocked the political world this Thursday. I'm doing it, Tim, because I think our country is uh, facing unprecedented challenges in the future. And uh, I think that the junctures that we face are both critical and unforeseen. That was actually four years ago. Mr. Colbert, welcome to this week. You know, down in South Carolina, your campaign seemed to hit a brick wall right out of the gate. Excuse me, I don't have a campaign, George. I don't You're mean to correct you. I have an exploratory committee. Exploratory We're finding committee. out whether there is a hunger for a Stephen Colbert campaign well, right now. Don't, don't force me into a campaign yet. I realize Not you're a political operative. But there are stages to this, George. Not in the South Carolina Republican Party. Here's what Matt Moore had mm -hmm. to say about it. There is no blank space on voting machines to write in a candidate. Stephen Colbert has about as much a chance of being elected president in South Carolina as he does of being elected pope. Zero. First of all, I'm a Roman Catholic, and I teach Sunday school. So I'd say I have a pretty good shot of being pope. <laughs> a better shot than Matt Moore does married, down in South you? Carolina. Excuse me? You're married, aren't you? George, are we going to get into our private lives right now? Are you married? <laughs> yes, I am. You are? Okay. But well, I'm fair not looking enough. to be Pope or President. Are I am an running exploratory committee to be Pope right now, George. <laughs> and that's after I have my exploratory committee to be President. Now, they say I can't get on the ballot in South Carolina. Is that what he's saying? Yep, no write in. They said you can't go to the moon. They said you can't put cheese inside a pizza crust. But NASA did it. <laughs> They had to because the cheese kept on floating off in space. Well, this is not your first time looking at a presidential run. We just showed that clip on Meet the Press four years ago. Last time, mm -hmm. you tried to run, though, as a Democrat. Now you're looking at running as a Republican. Isn't of that course. the biggest flip-flop ever? No, George, I got burned by the Democratic Party in 2008. I can't go back to even con contemplate that. I thought that the Republicans would be more welcoming than the Democrats, but it turns out in America, it's not how many people you have behind you, it's who you know. And if the Republicans are trying to keep me out, if the Republicans will not allow even a write-in candidate in South Carolina, well, that doesn't sound like freedom to me. So what does that Excuse mean? Excuse me, George. I was talking. You finished your point. Let me make mine. What does that mean if you do not get the Republican nomination for president, if you choose not to run in South Carolina? Will you run as a third-party candidate? Well, there are already a couple of third-party candidates out there, possibly. Trump is thinking about going third-party. Ron Paul might go third-party. So I might just leap to, like, fourth or fifth party. He all but ruled party. it out when I talked to him last week. What? He all but ruled it out when I talked Who? to him last week. Ron Paul. Ron Paul is not what he said to me. So I think I might go as a fourth or fifth party candidate, George. So you're open to running the th go through this whole year? This is an exploratory. When you're exploring, you don't know what you're going to find. The voting's in six days in South Carolina. Well, G George, I mean, be, just because something's difficult doesn't mean it shouldn't be worth doing. You know, I'm, I'm exploring right now. I'm a one-man Lewis and Clark, and I'm just looking for my Sacagawea. What will your turn, decision turn on? Excuse me? What will your decision turn on? If there's a hunger for Stephen Colbert out there, that's what we're exploring. Or, or George, if I find out in my exploratory phase that one of the other candidates might be better for the United States than a Stephen Colbert, then I've got 5% in South Carolina, and I'm willing to throw my weight behind one of the other candidates. All they have to do is come kiss my ring like they did Donald Trump's. And they can come visit me this well, week serious, if they want. You're serious about this Pope thing, but I want to turn to what your supporters are saying. There's a super PAC supporting you yes. in South Carolina. They released a new ad mm -hmm. overnight taking a very tough shot I haven't seen the, I have not seen this ad. If Mitt Romney really believes... Corporations are people, my friend. Then Mitt Romney is a serial killer. He's Mitt the Ripper. Mitt Romney, a serial killer, That's Mitt the Ripper. Stuff. That's powerful Doesn't stuff. Doesn't that cross the line? I, don't, I have nothing to do with that ad. I have no control over that ad. If anything in that ad is inaccurate, if he did not say corporations are people, and if he did not make his money cutting up corporate, killer. I am not calling anybody a serial killer. I can't tell Americans for a better tomorrow tomorrow what to do. It's not my super PAC, George. It's the super PAC of, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, John Stewer. <laughs> I believe it's a soft T. But listen, if that's not accurate, I hope they take it down. New I, don't know if, I don't know if Mitt Romney is a serial killer. That's a question he's going to have to answer. But I know one thing. That sounds like it's superstar actor John Lithgow voicing that. And he played a serial killer on Dexter. 
two points make a line. But you're like Newt Gingrich. If it's untrue, you want it to come down. Absolutely. I do not want him. any untrue ads on the air that could in any way be traced back to me. We got some questions from viewers on Facebook. Matthew Topper wants to know, who will your VP be? I, George, see, you're pushing me into being a candidate. I'm in an Time's exploratory phase right now. I'm still putting together my exploratory committee. And I'm, I'm looking, would you be willing to be on my exploratory committee? Uh, no, I cannot be on your exploratory Why committee. Why can you not be on my exploratory be committee? To, to run for vice president. But who are you looking at for vice president? Well, I'm, I, I, George, I, I certainly, I'm looking at myself right now. You know, I read in the New York Times last week that there are three Stephen Colbert's. One of those two other guys might be a good vice presidential candidate. If I'm running and I'm not. You have to be not, born in two different states according to the Constitution. Really? Well, I was born in Washington, D.C., which isn't a state at all, so I think I've got it covered all around. The second question from Facebook comes from Sharon smith Real. I love that Facebook. That thing's, that thing's growing. They are. How does Mrs. Colbert feel about the possibility of having her husband run for president? Um, Mrs. Colbert isn't on the exploratory committee, and uh, I think she's probably going to find out about it by watching the show today. <laughs> so, honey, uh, we might be running for president. Sorry about that. I should have told you before I came on here. <laughs> What's your guess on how she feels about it? She'd make a fantastic first lady of South Carolina. Okay, finally, Wanda Renee. Wanda also, Renee. Wanda Renee. I know Wanda. She's also, a good woman. Also on Facebook. Do you really? Believe, do you get your questions from anywhere but Facebook? No, we got a few of them from Facebook, though. Do you believe the outcome of the 2012 presidential election is based on how much money each candidate can raise? No, it's how much speech they can express. Because money equals speech. It doesn't matter if the speech comes from money or comes from your mouth. So you agree with the Supreme Court? on almost everything. Money equals speech. Therefore, the more money you have, the more you can speak. That, that's, that's just, that just stands to reason. If corporations are people, corporations should be able to speak. That's why I believe in super PACs. So you believe in super PACs. You believe they are a full expression of the First Amendment. Without a doubt. Do you not, George? Uh, Do you not believe that some... I'm asking the question Are you today, saying... Mr. Well, Cole you Cole. answer one of my questions, I'll answer one of yours. Do you believe that corporations are people? I, I am not going to weigh in on that. I, we're going to have a long campaign here, but I want really? to know what corporations you think about are, that. Corporations are people. You won't weigh in on whether some people are people? That <laughs> seems kind of racist, George. Uh -huh. I am going to move on because really? one of your top supporters... I bet you will. One of your top supporters got in a little, uh, in a little hot mm -hmm. water, John Stewart. You just called him John Stewart. He's running now. Again, I'm You're, not familiar with He's him. running your super PAC. Mm -hmm. But listen to this, what Roger Ailes, the chairman of Fox News, said about him. He said that Stewart hates conservative views. He hates conservative thoughts. He hates conservative verbiage. He hates conservatives. He's crazy. If it wasn't polarized, he couldn't make a living. He makes a living by attacking conservatives and stirring up a liberal base against it. It's not going to help you all that much in South Carolina to have someone who, according to Roger Ailes, hates conservatives supporting you. Now, Roger's a friend. Um, we hit the steam room together a lot. And I usually do his back. Uh, I agree with Roger. I mean, that's why I am disavowing anything that Jon Stewart does that is not accurate. I believe that Jon Stewart is a loose cannon. I believe that he's a liberal. I believe that he has it in for conservatives. And that's why I think if any of these ads are inaccurate, if any of these ads cause trouble, that's Jon Stewart actually trying to undermine my exploratory committee. Because again, I don't have a super PAC anymore. That's Jon Stewart's super PAC. It's one of the reasons why it's so hard to form this exploratory committee, George. I had to give away my super PAC. I did, that's my baby. You know how hard, it would be, how hard it is to give away your baby? That hurt. Now imagine if that baby also had a whole lot of money. How much harder would it make it to give away your baby? Because you might get the baby back, but it may not have the same amount of money when you gave the baby away. I'm going to try to get serious here. I don't know much, how much success that. I'm going to have here. But what difference do you hope to make with this mock campaign? It's not a campaign. This mock exploratory, exploratory committee. committee. And it's not mock. It is a real exploratory committee. Matter of fact, I will be the first person to ever actually have committee members on my exploratory committee. We're going to have uh, someone who's good with explosives. We're going to have a guy who's a mountain climber. And we're going to have a brain in a jar. So you're worried, but are you worried about how much money, what money is doing to this political environment? No, and no. Why, why would you worry about what money is doing to the political environment? There are $11.2 million in super PAC ads being run in South Carolina. Super PACs are outspending the candidates two to one in South Carolina right now. That just means, according to Citizens United, there's just more speech than there was before. And I don't know about you, but I believe in the freedom of speech. Especially as a member of the press, you should support that. When's your decision coming? George, um, again, um, I know it's your job to try to get a story, 
but I, I, I can't tell you what I found yet because I've just started exploring. You know, did Queen Isabella say, go to America, and then say, have you found anything? I'm like, I haven't even gotten on the Nina and the Pinta and the Santa Maria yet. Let me go and come back. Let me find the spice routes and, and then come back, please. And come back when you find them. Mr. Colbert, thank you very so much. Thank you so much, George.